This is the new Kawasaki Ninja 650, which replaces the ER6F. It's powered by Kawasaki's 649cc parallel twin engine, makes 69 horsepower at 8,000 RPM. That's three horsepower less than the ER6F delivers, but it isn't all bad because with 48.46 pounds foot of torque on offer, the Ninja 650 has slightly more torque than the bike it replaces. At 193 kilos, Kawasaki says the Ninja 650 weighs 19 kilos less than the bike it replaces, courtesy of changes including a new lighter steel trellis frame, saving the claim 10 kilos, a new swing arm, plus lighter five spoke wheels. Kawasaki says the Ninja 650 is also 6.8% more economical than the uh, ER6F and it also boasts a slip assist and slipper clutch, an adjustable shift light, newness in brakes, an X-shaped LED rear light assembly and a centrally mounted rear shock. And as you can see, it looks worthy of carrying the Ninja name with its sharp and aggressive styling that's kind of derived and inspired by the ZX-10R. It costs £6,349, that's £300 more than the R6F, and it means it's pricier than competition from Yamaha in the form of the MT-07, which is £6,099, and the Suzuki SV650, which is £5,699. So, back to the engine. It's lost a bit of outright power, but it does make up for that with plenty of easily usable mid-range grunt. The smooth spread of torque makes itself known from sort of just under 5,000 RPM, and the engine gives its best from there until the shift light starts lighting up the clear dash at 8,000 RPM. It's fair to say that it's not an engine that's gonna set your trousers or their contents on fire, but for a bike aimed at big first bikers, downsizers, ER6 customers and learners, I think it's spot on if less entertaining than the motor in the MT-07. And it's a similar story with the brakes. At the front, the pair of two piston Nissan calipers with 300 mm semi-floating discs provide exactly the right amount of power for this bike with good feel through the adjustable lever. The suspension, however, is less encouraging and it didn't take much for it to be revealed as the cheap kit it is. And here's what it is. The front end of the bike gets 41 mil right way up, non-adjustable fork, and in the rear, there's a centrally mounted preload adjustable shock with a horizontal back linkage. The suspension is soft, and best described as lacking refinement. And the shock is the worst offender here, thanks to the harsh ride it delivers over bumps and dips. A click more preload didn't make a huge amount of difference and adjusting the shock requires removing a panel to get to the access point for the C-spanner. Nonetheless, aside from the soft suspension and its sometimes harsh performance, the Ninja 650 goes around corners well, although the rear OE Dunlop Sportmax D214 W-spec tire did give me a couple of unpleasant moments when it momentarily gave up grip as I flipped around slow, nagery corners. Handling wise, the Ninja 650 is light and effortless to steer, and I'm sure that anyone who swings a leg over it will soon find themselves bossing it because it's really agreeable and easy to just get on and ride, whether that's hustling along your favorite road or doing less exciting daily duties. And when it comes to that daily stuff, it ticks all the right boxes because it's light, nimble, fun and comfortable, which is just the stuff you want when you're on the daily grind. The low 790mm seat height is comfortable and the riding position, although upright, still feels sporty enough when you want to. The low other useful ergonomic stuff comes in the form of the adjustable brake and clutch levers and the Ninja 650 also has a light action slipper clutch and that put up with all the deliberate and accidental down change provocation I could dish out and it makes the Ninja 650 a friendly, pleasant bike to ride. The screen is adjustable through three levels, but only if you've got the toolkit handy, which isn't that great, is it? And at its lowest setting, it doesn't do much, but at its highest, it did keep the wind blast off my body. Though I definitely wouldn't be choosing this bike for a long tour because it's really small. And although the screen is effective at its highest setting, why Kawasaki's failed to use the Z1000SX's simple screen adjustment mechanism or something similar on this bike is a bit of a mystery to me. There's a refreshing lack of buttons on the switch gear too, because the Ninja 650 has no traction control, riding modes, or electronic business, beyond the Bosch ABS module. So that means that the screen isn't packed full of lights and symbols clamoring for your attention. So the cockpit is basic and functional and there's nothing wrong with that. Overall, this bike feels like a winning replacement for the ER6F because it brings a lot to the table. It's superbly friendly and accessible to simply get on, ride and enjoy. So for me, it gets a big fat tick in the box marked be a good replacement for the ER6F. But the big question for me is, is it deserving of the Ninja name? I don't think so. Ninjas are about performance and don't have cheap, harsh suspension. But then again, if that's one of my chief concerns with this bike, I probably haven't got too much to complain about.